Hi everyone and welcome to the Big Oggy Bakehouse. Today is a recipe that has been requested. Um, we've asked uh, numerous people on the channel if they've uh, got favourite recipes or they're interested in us creating recipes for them. And uh, Sharon Thompson, hi Sharon, uh, you've asked if we could find a cheese and potato pie. Now, I remember cheese and potato pie from school dinners and uh, we've actually got a school dinners book recipe book. So we're going to do some school dinners ones very soon, a bit, bit of fun. Uh, but today we found a, a pie recipe from the BBC Good Food magazine and uh, on the website and it's for a deep dish cheese, potato and onion pie. It is. So it's going to be really nice. So I'm going to leave that with Kelly. We prepped all the ingredients so it should be a lot quicker for you. Prep takes a little while because it's all slicing things very thinly, but it's all done. But if you've got a mandolin, you'll probably do it in super quick time. Just be careful not to slice your hands off. Okay, so I'm going to be on the camera, leave it the camera. <clears throat> okay, so we've got all our ingredients prepped and here we go. You need 200 grams of strong hard cheese, such as cheddar. Now, we're you're a not, bit- You're not a lover of strong no, cheese, are you? we're a bit, we're a, a cheese loving family but not specifically really strong cheese. John likes quite a strong cheese. Georgia likes practically anything, but I'm sort of a bit of a wuss, really. I, I don't really like- You don't like spicy things and you don't no, like- I don't like cheese burning in my mouth. So basically we've gone with a medium. So what you need is 200 grams, but you need half grated coarsely and half in little chunks. So that's that. Then you need a 200 gram or two tub a liter cup. of creme fraiche. It, it's a pot of creme fraiche. Yeah. Short crust pastry. Now you all know, generally I make my own short crust pastry, but today I'm cheating and you need 500 grams of short crust pastry and I've bought this. So. Yeah, we want, we want to make recipes that are quicker for you to create at the moment without oh, yeah. passing too much. So that's that one. And then you need a kilo of floury potatoes, thinly sliced. Now, that's what I'm saying, thinly sliced. I like making scallops when I was a kid yeah, and my mum would make but chips very, and very, very thin. So you can practically almost see through them, to be quite honest. And I'm guessing this is obviously to help with cook. It actually says floury potatoes. Um, but again, we are more a waxy potato family. And I would say if you're making a recipe and you're not liking the ingredients you're putting in in the first place, what is the point? Adapt. Exactly. So we like waxy potatoes and I'm using waxy potatoes and I'm sure it'll be just as lovely as it would have if it was floury potatoes. I'm also, I'm also guessing it'll probably hold together slightly more this because floury ones may have packed down on the Yeah, yeah. I would think so too. Um, but it's locked down as well, so you use what you can find. Two onions, finely sliced. Again, I would sort of large try onion, and right? aim for the same sort of thickness as your potato so that it's sort of a uniform thing. A bunch of spring onions, coarsely chopped. A small pinch of ground nutmeg. Now I've grated a fresh nutmeg in there, so that's our nutmeg. And then a large pinch of paprika. We're using smoked paprika. Because that's what we got. Absolutely. And one beaten egg, and that's it. So. To start off with, you heat your oven to 200 degrees. I'm not going to do that now because if I do, you're going to be hearing the fan going. Um, that's 200 degrees Celsius, 180 with a fan or gas mark six. Then we are going to mix, I'm going to move that paste right away, in a bowl, our grated cheese and the creme fraiche. Now we did think we might be able to get creme fraiche where we live, but we were just lucky that a little corner shop had some. Um, so we were thinking maybe you could use cream. Just might not be quite as strong a flavour. Cream might kill it a little bit, but we were lucky. Creme so fraiche is get creme very fresh, similar, yeah. isn't it? Similar to yogurt. Yeah, it's a kind of yogurty. That's what I was thinking. Place. It's also a bit healthier. Maybe like sour cream or something like yeah. that would do as well. You know, I think, like I said, just adapt to what you've got really. So you mix that together make sort of like a cheesy paste if you like I'm 
Now I've read the method of this and what Kelly is making at the moment literally goes on top of the pie. So that will all seep into what she does later. Right, so there's our cheesy goo. And then you grease, flour and line a pastry, uh, not a pastry, a pie dish. We've got a deep pie dish. You can use a pie plate, a metal one if you've got one, or even a um, deepish cake tin. And it needs to be around 23 centimetres wide. We've also got a lasagna dish, which we're probably working up. It's again, it's okay. it doesn't really have to be round. Does no, it? it doesn't have to be round, but pies are traditionally round, I think. So if you've got a square one or an oblong one, use whatever you've got. This just happens to be our favourite pie dish, and that's what we're using. When you line it with your pastry, make sure you've got, you don't cut off the overhang. So it just says to leave it for the minute. So we'll do that. If you are making your own pastry and you have a 500 gram block that you've made, you need to roll out two thirds of it to line the bottom of the tin or dish. And obviously you're gonna save the other bit for the top. So the thing that you do next is you take your potatoes and you put a layer of potatoes in the bottom of your pie dish, okay? So I just lay them in. I don't think you have to be fancy, but obviously you've got an awful lot of potatoes. So just sort of, I'm slightly overlapping as I'm going is what I'm getting at. Not that you're obviously gonna see the inside until you cut it. There we go. So you blew your potatoes as such and then you sprinkle over some of your sliced onions and some of your um, spring onions so let's take some of these now obviously don't do them in like solid like break them up is what I'm getting I don't put solid layer of onion in for goodness sake so there's my onion so there goes our, our onions. Don't put them in like that, obviously. Break them up, but make sure you've got a good even layer. You've got plenty of onion to go, so you know there's no need to skimp here. And then a few bits of spring onion, as such. And then you repeat for a second layer. I'll come back when I finish this layer. You don't want to keep watching me put potatoes. It's right. just layering. Yeah. So you do two layers and then there's a change. So I'll tell you about that when I've done it. Okay, so when you get to your second layer and we've put another layer of potatoes, another layer of onion, a little bit more sprinkle of spring onion, you put some of your chunks of cheese in. Now, obviously you don't have masses of this, so don't, Stick it all in at once. Ideally, you could also put a bit in the other layers, I guess, but most of the interesting stuff gets put in the middle layer. Yeah, I think it's sort of like two layers, then a gooey layer, and then a top layer, and then like a gooey top. That's what it seems like. Right, so there's a bit of our cheese. We're going to put some seasoning in there. So we're going to put a little bit of salt. Yeah, when we looked at the ingredients, and obviously we've given you the ingredient list, there wasn't any salt so, and pepper. So we did wonder about that, and then suddenly, halfway through the recipe, here's the salt and pepper. So, so we will add it to the ingredient list. A little sprinkle of nutmeg. Again, these things are to taste, so if you don't want them, leave them out. And a little bit of paprika. I guess paprika gives it a bit of colour as well, doesn't it? A little it? bit of heat as well. Because we're using smoked, it'll give it okay. a real strong depth of flavour again. It's just adding layers in the same way you're layering pies. And then you splodge over half of your creme fresh mixture. Like that. Try and sort of spread it out a bit. I don't think it really matters that you get all over it if you like because obviously it's going to melt into all of this no, so it's quite full already that's what i was just going to say it looks really full already 
but you've another two layers to go and it, it does say in the recipe that your potatoes are going to come way up over the top so that's how it's supposed to be so don't panic about that so I'm going to do another two rows of potato onion um, uh, seasoning and splodge on the rest of my creme fraiche mixture and then I'll come back this is quite repetitive this one but it should be yummy at the end now with this fourth layer as we said your potatoes are over the top of your pie dish and so the recipe says to push it down a little like you know give it a Impressive. bit of a press obviously this is because hopefully it's all going to cook down and be lovely and gooey and oozy last of my potato okay so basically this is four and a bit layers so what you're doing is you're building up one layer one layer one layer as you can see it's coming well above the top of my pie dish and I've pushed it down and it's still well above um, onions I would say two medium on onions I use two large ones and there's way too much onion but again, that's the taste. Absolutely. So you, and it's a learning curve. Maybe you should have put a bit more in the, in the other layers, but we wouldn't know that before well, we do I, this. I think I've been quite generous with the onions, so we'll see. And then the last thing you're going to put on is the rest of your cheesy creme fraiche. Cheesy goo, as yeah. you described it earlier. So this is a this is a proper pie, as another one of our followers said the other day. When we made a pie recently, we did the St. Kidney one. He said it was as lovely as it was, it wasn't a proper pie because it didn't have a base and a top. This one has a base and a top. Yes, it does. Right. And now the last thing you do is you roll out the rest of your pastry and put it over the top. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back. So, once you've splodged on your creme fraiche, you roll out your piece of pastry left for your top. You put an egg wash around the overhang and then squeeze them both together to make a seal, basically. You can do it posh and do like proper crimps or whatever. In fact, let's get a fork and do a little bit fancy, shall we? It looks enormous. <laughs> that's, no. that's quite a pie. I wonder how many it actually serves. Whilst, whilst so Kelly is doing this, we were just um, thinking about the difference between waxy potatoes and floury potatoes. And I'm wondering if because we've used waxy potatoes, this may actually hold the size a bit more than floury potatoes. Maybe the floury potatoes would have collapsed a little bit, hence why you pile it up this high. But whatever happens, it's going to be one heck of a pie. There. And then you trim. That's why I've seen something like this when it is um, got to count as a third count. Remember the potato mountain? Yeah. Yeah. Right, then we're going to egg it all over so it goes nice and brown. And this is going to go in the oven, like I said, at 180 fan for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, you turn your oven down to well 160 done. and you cook it for another hour. So this pie is going to take an hour and a half to cook completely, which when you think about the amount of potato in there is probably about right. Yeah, I'm guessing the, the higher first bit actually cooks your pastry pretty much. And then probably. the other bit will just hopefully cook the other insides slowly. 
because none of it's cooked so far. This is not one of those pies that you made before where I have a feeling it's already cooked. No, so it's just not blind baked it. or anything like that. It's just literally in it goes. This is the same as if you'll be cook cooking or baking a pasty. Everything's Absolutely. raw in it and then you have to cut the whole thing. So, there are the beauty is and it looks, I must admit, it looks rather lovely. God, I'm daring you to lift it up. I bet it weighs a ton. So normally, you, normally at this point you lift it up and show the camera. Yep, it's heavy. Yeah, thought it might be. <laughs> there we go. I think that looks ace. Looks really good. So we're going to cook it and then obviously we'll cut it for our tea and uh, we'll, we'll take a photograph and we'll show you. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll do it again and we'll actually uh, do what we normally do and give it a bit of a taste. Yeah, absolutely. So remember, 180 to start with fan for half an hour, then turn it down to 160 for another hour. And we'll be back in about an hour and a half. Yep, stick around. See you later. Hi everybody and welcome back. This is the finished pie. It has sunk a little. I'm not going to lift it up because that's still quite it's warm. It's still hot. Uh, it's been out of the oven about half an hour, an hour or so. Only about, yeah, about half an hour. Okay, they say you're supposed to take 10 minutes at least to let it settle before you cut it. We had a quick walk, so it's been half an hour. It's sunk a little bit, which is what we expected. It is. And it's still massively deep and massively heavy. Uh, the, you know, we could try and make a pretty slice for a picture and we probably will do later, but it's going to be a car crash the first, the first It's always slice. really difficult to get out of the first slice of any pie. So, so. have fun digging out something. Here okay. we go. Whilst Ken is doing this, we had a discussion with one of our friends on Instagram, Andy, um, Andy Hallam, who's a really good cook as well. And we showed him a picture and his first thing was, are we putting a little hole in the top of the pie? And we said, well, the recipe said no, but we weren't sure. So there was this fear about a possible pie explosion, etc. Um, so in the end, we decided, because it, it was in for two temperatures, so the first half an hour we left it without a hole, and then when we changed the temperature, we just put a little hole in it just to hit the steam out. My worry was, if we put a hole in the top initially, because directly underneath the pastry was our last splodge of the Goo. cheese and um, creme fraiche mixture, so I thought if I put a hole in the top initially, it would provide an escape route for molten, yeah, we could have a molten cheesy top. mess. But so, but it didn't. So I left it, like I said, we left it for the first half an hour and then I put the hole in. And hopefully it's cooked through and we're just about to see. I'm always thinking big spoon. It feels like it's cut through all the potatoes really nicely. Here we go. Yeah, I think big spoon might have been a good temp for this, but yeah, go on, give it a try. Oh no, that's all right. That looks really good. There we go. In fact, is that good? I'm gonna take a picture because we need a picture for the thumbnail. So we'll do that now. It smells wonderful. Let's just do that a second. Fantastic amount of layers. Layers have come out really well. Give it that way as well. I oh, know. Sorry about this. I'm being very arty, everybody. Okay. Yep. Go on. You carry on. Let's have a taste. Okay. So it is all soft. Looks fantastic. Looks really gooey, as we thought it would be. Wait. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Discussion. We'll drop you to that piece first. Dig in. See what you think. Dig in. Right. That's really nice. We put a medium cheese in and actually that's quite a nice cheesy strength without being over the top. The potatoes, because like I said we haven't got floury potatoes, we've got waxy, so we thought they would hold up and they have, but they are cooked. They're soft. There's a they little, are... tiny little bit of bite to them, but that's fine because we said just reminding us of I think potato dauphin was. A bit, yeah. And it's got that kind of potato dauphin was feel in a pie. You're probably going to say it needs another 10 minutes cooking. I actually think it needs more salt. Okay. But again, that, again, that's a personal taste thing. And I think if you maybe have a stronger cheese, you, would have, you wouldn't have needed so much salt anyway. But you always put salt, extra salt on things when you cook them anyway. I really like it. Very yeah. good. Very good. I have a feeling 
that this pie will be better tomorrow. Mm. I think once the flavours of all... In the same way you like a quiche better the next day. Yeah. But I think this probably... It's very good. And I'm, I'm thinking right now, I can see why they would say salad, and we are going to have salad with ours this evening. Yeah. But beans would be Beans would be better. better. Yeah, I think beans is better. Because you've got that gooey idea. Same way all cheese pie is great with beans. Mm. Even a school dinner one. Well. I've got a cheesy chunk then. Yeah, that's good. They surprise you every now and again with proper blobs yeah, of cheese. Yeah, when you get a blob of cheese, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like the sort of marathon. Oh, done it. There you go. Sorry. That's right. Very good. It's good. So, yeah. I recommend this one, give it a try. If you want a vegetarian option to some of our things we've done, obviously we've done steak and kidney, etc. This is a fantastic, robust, that was where we come up with earlier. Wholesome, robust, certainly flavoursome, very filling pie. Um, yeah. And serving wise, one, two, three, I reckon that's eight. At least. Yeah, eight, that's a big size portion and we have pulled one out, I reckon that's eight in there. Proper family meal that you can have the next day, and it's a bit even be better the next day. Very good. Anything it's else also, say? I think you could also use this on a picnic. You reckon it'll get when it goes cold? I reckon when it be when it's cold, it'd be lovely too. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. So very versatile. Absolutely. So, thank you very much for watching. The time. Yeah. Definitely worth the preparation. It's yeah. a lot of faffing around it, trying it felt to like slice it was, things. It felt there's a lot of faffing around, but really it was just slicing. And that's basically because we don't have a mandolin. Yeah, if you had a mandolin, you'd just wish them out really quickly and watch your fingers. I mean, we could have actually, if we thought about it, tried to set up the food processor and sliced them in that. But again, it's just cleaning it all down again it's fine. after, isn't it? It's, in the moment, you've got locked down, you've more time to cook. Exactly. Just spend time cooking together. It's, yeah. an, it's an enjoyable thing. Definitely give, a good give one. Give us a try. Definitely a good one. I'd give it four out of five. Yeah, definitely. I would say eight out of ten, four out of five. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Perfect. And um, it'd be really good to try tomorrow. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Okay, thanks so much for watching everybody. If you try this, send us the photographs, all right? Let us know how you got on with it. And we'll, we'll put them on the new, um, hopefully, weekend show. We are trying to work out how to do that at the moment. But we've yeah. got a couple of videos from people, etc. So that's going to be really good. Yeah. See you all, all right. again soon. See you all again soon. Have fun. Bye, Bye. for now. That's nice. I don't think it needs any more salt. I do. No, you're wrong. Because the salt was your option, you just put the salt in, so it's up to you how much salt you put in. When you get the cheesy bit, it's really salty. It's really nice. Very good. <laughs>